Hi there, my name is Steve, this is Sticky Way Weekly, and we're going to be talking about how your password choices are still dangerously easy to guess. I'm a fan of the website HackRead.com, this is from where I got this information, and we're going to be talking about it. The day before Christmas, throughout the earth, we learned that finally the word password is no longer first place. But, what replaced it was one, two, three, four, five, six. Please. Come on, if you have any variation of counting the word QWERTY, interlaced numbers of QWERTY and whatever, words like I love you, or even the word password, or anything, you know, related to that, combined together, you're doing yourself a great disservice and you're putting all of your accounts at risk. Currently, the best advice we can give you is Use a program like LastPass, create strong, unique passwords for every single website, and move on from there. For developers, I would say enforce password rules. And of course, remember, forcing a user to change their password every 3, 6, 12 months doesn't make it more secure. It just promotes bad behavior in the creation of passwords. So now that we have that flat out, put out of the way, how can we make the internet better. Well, how about we ditch the password altogether? So that's what I'm going to be doing for 2020. I'm going to be creating a brand new login for my websites. This is how you make a website far more secure without a fixed user generated password. First, we have to focus on the fact that you still need to use a username or an email address. I would use a fingerprint as a username only because this sucks as a password, people. Keep that one in mind, it's not secure, but we can't really do that. So username or email address, once that is entered, have an email or text message sent to the user with a one-time password. Now, I would prefer the email method because text messages are vulnerable to an SS7 flaw in the cell network, which is something that eventually I'll explain, but I have not gotten to that yet. Emails are usually plain text though, and are vulnerable to man in the middle attacks. However, it is possible to use open PGP on an email and that would actually make it possible for it to be encrypted, which I will talk about in a future episode. So if we send an email to a user that uses open PGP to encrypt the email, we can now avoid the man in the middle issue and have a safe email with a one-time password sent to the user. As the final step after entering the correct one-time password, use the two-factor authentication method, like using the program's Google Authenticator or Authy and have a mass math-based algorithm be responsible for giving a short-term unique token to enter in the website. That gives you three pieces of information to log in, which by the way, if a current website has two-factor authentication, it uses exactly three pieces of information, a username, a password, and a one-time token. The only difference in this method is that we're not allowing the user to create their own password. We're giving them a unique password every single time. Now, you might never, ever successfully convince everybody to be responsible with their passwords, but you can take that responsibility out of their hands and make everything safer. And that is exactly what I plan to do. And that is exactly what many websites around the world have started doing. So like, if you like it, dislike it, if you didn't share with those that you think can benefit from this and don't forget to subscribe. And if you have any questions, comments, suggestions for stories, or even this program that I'm going to be making, go to tqaweekly.com or email me at ask at course the website has a contact form to email me directly and if you want to see me play video games such as the witcher 3 head over to twitch.tv slash z axis 1981 where i play thursday friday saturday 
starting at midnight and going all the way up to 3 or even 4 a.m. Thank you for watching and goodbye.